This is the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, the only 3D printer that I've owned that I can confidently recommend to just about anybody. It's got a five inch touchscreen with an incredibly intuitive interface, insanely fast printing speed and amazing print quality, an accompanying app for checking on your prints while you're away from home, AI enhanced error detection that will tell you if your print fails, and so, so much more that we will go over in this video. I've been printing with this thing pretty much nonstop over the past couple of months, as you can clearly see, and I have been blown away by what this thing can do. I've always loved 3D printing technology and I've had a few printers over the years but I could never really rely on them. They were always breaking in weird ways or prints were failing without any good reason for doing so and it was so frustrating to deal with that I kind of just more or less gave up. But the failure rate is so low on this printer that I just want to keep printing more stuff even when I don't need to. That's not to say that the printer has had no failures. There have been a few from time to time and we'll get into those a little bit later but 98% of the time this printer spits out some amazing 3D prints. I think a huge part of what Bamboo Lab has done right with this printer is how easy everything is. 3D printing is a pretty complicated technology with a ton of moving parts and variables, but everything, right down to the user interface on the touchscreen, has been simplified for the user as much as possible. Everything is very thoughtfully laid out and it's very intuitive to use. There's little icons for everything to help you understand what a particular setting or value will affect, and it's just as responsive as your average smartphone. If something in the printer needs maintenance or troubleshooting, the printer will not only let you know, but it'll also give you a QR code to scan that will take you to an article about how to solve that exact problem you're having. It's that kind of attention to detail that really pushes this printer far above the others for me. The accompanying Bamboo Handy app is almost just as good. I can check on my print from anywhere with the built-in camera, control the temperature of the extruder or the heated bed, change the printing speed, or pause or stop the print entirely. I can also watch my time lapses here because yes, the X1 C does have the ability to take a picture on every layer and store it as a video on a micro SD card, which is really cool. They've also built the Maker World library into the app, which doesn't have as many 3D models as a place like Thingiverse, but it has specific printing profiles submitted by users that will set absolutely everything up for your printer and start printing the model you chose in literally two taps. Everything you see in front of me on this desk was printed by this printer over the past couple of months. We've got the head of Kratos printed in gold PETG, a Japanese Oni mask printed in green PLA metal, and uh, an entire Toyota 22RE engine, which by by the way, works? It's got a full crankshaft down here that when I spin the flywheel, the connecting rods move the pistons up and down the block like they would in the real thing. This was designed by Eric the Pool Boy over on Thingiverse. He reverse engineered the 80s Toyota pickup he had in his garage, and he uploaded the models he designed so that anybody could print this out and learn exactly how an engine works. It's incredible. This took a lot of work to print and put together, and I'm still not completely finished with it. I'm still waiting on some valve springs so that I can finish putting together the cylinder head and uh, all the lifters and valves and the camshaft and that sort of thing. So it's not finished, but it still looks really cool right now. The fact that this printer can print something that needs to be as mechanically precise as an engine speaks volumes. It's not absolutely perfect. You know, there are some little things here and there like overhangs that could have come out a little bit cleaner or some ringing here and there on rounded objects like these headers, but it's incredible to see how far 3D printing tech has come over the past decade. Most of the parts for this engine were printed in Bamboo Labs carbon fiber infused PLA. The X1C ships with a hardened steel nozzle capable of squeezing filament out at 300 degrees Celsius. So CF filament, as well as the more industrial filament types like ASA, PETG CF, or nylon, are no problem. I really like PLA CF though. It's got this lovely rough texture and it's much more matte than other PLA. So it comes out looking a lot less like a 3D printed part. And it's just as easy to print as regular PLA too. The X1C also prints insanely fast, up to 500 millimeters per second according to Bamboo Lab. This Benchy, which was like one of the first things I printed, it's always one of the first things you print with a printer, it printed in 25 minutes flat, and that's just on the standard print speed. It goes up to ludicrous mode, which is the fastest I've ever seen anything print. There is a little bit of time eaten up by some calibration that the printer does at the start of every single print though. Every single time you wanna print something, the printer goes through this calibration process that automatically homes the printer, it levels the bed with LiDAR lasers, and even does this little resonance calibration thing with the intent to cancel out vibrations so that you get a smoother print. It usually takes around six to eight minutes, and if that's what it takes to get a perfect print most of the time, I think it's a pretty good trade-off. This mask with supports printed in less than five hours, which is a lot faster than I was expecting, and it came out great. I really like this PLA metal that Bamboo makes more than I thought. It's got a real nice shine to it. 
The only part that isn't perfect is anywhere the supports would have touched. And that's because I literally just imported this model into the Bamboo Studio desktop app and hit print. I didn't mess with any of the settings at all, even though I probably should have. The fact that it can print that fast makes me wish that the build volume was bigger. The X1 Carbon can print objects up to 256 millimeters cubed, which is enough for most things you'd want to print, but not everything. For example, this Witch King of Angmar mask that I had to print in like eight different pieces. This was printed in white ABS and then glued together with some plumber's glue. I still have some sanding and painting to do, but it looks so, so good so far. This would have been nearly impossible for me to make without a 3D printer, but with one, I barely had to do anything at all. I just realized that everything I've shown you so far has been either a toy or a cosplay prop, so how about some more useful stuff? I 3D printed this ergonomic shelf for the Apple Magic Mouse to make it more comfortable. I printed these drill holders for my workbench, this Macintosh dock for my old iPod Nano, these piston-shaped shelf brackets, this AA battery box to hold all my batteries, this drill press for my Dremel tool, and so on and so forth. And we haven't even scratched the surface of what this printer can do yet. Take this little Totoro, for example. Shout out to the Ghibli fans out there. This Totoro was not painted, nor was it a multi-part model. The X1 Carbon has the ability to do multi color prints with up to four colors seamlessly with the addition of the AMS module that sits on top of the printer. Now it is an extra that you have to buy, but it's absolutely worth it. As soon as you put a new roll of filament into the AMS and feed it into the tubes, the AMS will rotate the filament and read the little QR codes on the sides of the filament spool. From that, the printer will know exactly what filament you just put into it. And under the filament tab of the settings, it will show up with the correct color and filament type. When you want to do a multicolor print, the AMS automatically feeds the correct color filament into the extruder and when it needs to change the filament it cuts the filament inside the print head retracts it and then feeds the next roll inside the cut filament is then ejected outside of the back of the printer through the unofficially but appropriately named poop shoot now i have a love hate relationship with this poop shoot on the one hand the fact that the printer does all of this cutting and retracting and feeding of the new filament on its own without any human interaction is amazing and it's like having your own little factory inside your house on the other hand it poops a lot, especially when doing these like multicolored prints. In order to print this Totoro, for example, the printer had to change colors 630 times and it had to poop every single time it changed filament. That's a lot of wastage, not only for filament, but also time. This Totoro took nearly 20 full hours to print because of how many times it needed to stop, retract the filament, feed more filament in, and so on and so forth. The other thing about the poop shoot is that sometimes those little filament balls sometimes get caught in the shoot. Thankfully, the printer does realize this and pauses the print for you so that the filament doesn't back up and spill all over your print bed and ruin your print. But the fact that it gets caught at all means you do have to, <laughs> I can't believe I'm gonna say this, you have to stick your finger up the poop chute and make sure all those little stuck bits come out. You're welcome, internet. There are many, many iterations of a poop catcher on Maker World and Thingiverse, including ones that allow you to hook up a hose and like funnel it directly into a trash bin, which I think is what I'm gonna be doing soon because I'm getting tired of having to clean up all the little bits and pieces of plastic everywhere. Now, remember when I said this printer has AI enhanced error detection? Well, it does, and I'm glad it does because it has saved me a lot of filament the few times I had a failed print. There were a couple of times that the print failed in some way and the AI was just not able to detect that it had failed and it just kind of kept on printing even when I turned up the error sensitivity too high in the settings. But some detection is better than no detection, I suppose. Another thing I don't really care for is how loud the printer is. Without any sort of printing modifications, the X1C is a bit of a nuisance to keep in the same room that you work in. The exhaust fan at the back is very loud, and even with a pair of like closed back headphones on, I can still easily hear it from the other side of the room. Thankfully, there are a multitude of mods you can print to help combat that, like this exhaust fan muffler that I found on Maker World. I've also discovered that a set of vibration absorbing feet and a small rubberized mouse pad underneath will help cut down on the noise generated by the moving parts of the printer. Bamboo has also released software that help cancel out the noise generated by the stepper motors, which is a nice touch. With the additional mods and the new software, the X1C is a lot quieter than it was when I first got it. It's still nowhere near silent, but at least I can sit next to it and get some work done with a pair of headphones on now. So you might have noticed by now that I haven't been delving too deep into the specs of this printer, and that's on purpose. I am not a 3D printing nerd. 
I'm definitely not brand new to the space, but I'm definitely no expert either. And I think that's an important distinction. You don't have to be an expert to get into 3D printing anymore. Printers like the X1 Carbon make it so easy to get up and running and are so reliable that just about anybody can use one with ease. We finally reached the point where 3D printing doesn't have to be a hobby anymore. It can be a useful, reliable tool that anybody can stick in their workshop or makerspace. And yes, it is an expensive tool. The X1 Carbon starts at 1200 bucks USD without the AMS or 1450 with the AMS. But considering all the tech involved, that's extremely competitive. And I haven't even talked about the build quality. This thing is solid metal and glass. It makes most other 3D printers on the market look like a cheap toy in comparison. To say that I'm happy with this printer is an understatement. It's been a joy to use, and I cannot wait to get out and print more cool stuff. Links to where you can buy this printer will be in the description below if you're interested. Hope you like the video. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a great day.